Lillian Garcia, we've got WWE Evolution, WWE's first all-women's pay-per-view. You are such a block in that history of WWE. You sang for WWE, you've been a ring announcer for WWE, you've interviewed, you've done segments, so much you've done, and you've done it for a long time. And now you've got the Chase and Glory podcast, which is very cool. But here's what I want to throw at you. So is Lillian Garcia a Gamecock? Oh my God! <laughs> that is not where I thought you were going. That is so funny. Uh, uh, yeah, I like to switch it up like that a little bit and all. Are you proud to be called a Gamecock? I don't know. What is that? <laughs> Absolutely. Well, first, a Gamecock? Come on, that's a fighting game. That's right. That's right. But when you say it and nobody knows, like if people don't know, and then probably there are people out there that still don't know unless they know you and read your bio and things like that. Okay, so Lillian Garcia went to University of South Carolina, and their mascot affectionately is a Gamecock. <laughs> it is. It's a Gamecock, and what I love about it is when little old women have like their little bumper stickers that say, you can't mess with our cocks. <laughs> <laughs> My friend, one of my college friends was, oh, oh my God, one of my college friends was a huge University of South Carolina fan, and uh, he, I remember when I was leaving school for the year, he gave me a sticker, Go Cox, and I just thought that was great. <laughs> it's so cool. Lillian, did you, did you go to the football games? Were you entrenched in the sports there? What did you think of the, the Gamecock mentality at University of South Carolina? <laughs> end zone like really close oh go ahead I was gonna say isn't the end zone really close to like the hedges are the hedges are the are the hedges the bushes like in the back of the end zone or no I think so I'm trying to remember the except but I'm talking about like the, the seats themselves look like claws on both sides oh that is so cool that's really cool <laughs> beautiful stadium when you I, I can't remember if they And that, I'm glad you brought that up. I was going to ask if you ever went back and if you did anything with the University of South Carolina because Titus O'Neill, current WWE superstar, is a University of Florida graduate. He goes back there and gets involved and, and does a lot of other great things too and all. So it's nice to see. I'm wondering though, during your time in WWE, since you were a Gamecock, did you have any rapport with the other superstars and other staffers when it came to college football season and the pride of University of South Carolina. Did that ever come up? <laughs> yeah, it's so funny because I, everybody, I mean, there's so many people on the staff love football. And now a lot of them are into, you know, pro football, but, but there'd be some that were definitely into college ball, uh, which is what I love. And anytime with the Gamecocks, they would laugh at me and they would, you know, you're with your Gamecocks and, and stuff, but they knew how much of a big Gamecock fan I was. So we had fun with it. That's great. That's always good. That's fun times with that. All right, so Lillian Garcia, you're, you're just a, a Jill of all trades. And singing, I'm, I'm curious with this. Have you ever performed with Lita? Right, because Lita went out and did, I know it's different music, right? She's more of, I guess, grunge type of music. But I, I, I was just curious if the, the singing musical 
paths ever crossed. <laughs> no, they didn't, but I definitely, that would have been fun for sure. And I love the fact that she wanted to sing and she got her band and she went out there and did it. I just love the fact that when people have a passion for something, that they go do it. And Lita will be teaming with her bestie, Trish Stratus, against Alexa Bliss, who's on Chasing Glory podcast. You can check that out now. And her partner, tag partner, Mickey James, won this WWE Evolution pay-per-view, first ever all women's pay-per-view. Lillian, are you going to be involved at all? Will you be there or will you be involved? Is there anything you could say about that right now? I wish I could, I could even talk about it. Like, I really don't know. I really don't know uh, what's going on with Evolution and with myself. Let's just hope so, uh, especially the fact that I was I'm so honored to have been outside of Stephanie McMahon. Um, being 15 years with the company, I was the, the longest female, like I said, outside of Stephanie. So it, it obviously shows that I love WWE and just how many amazing opportunities I got while I was there and things that I didn't expect to be doing and just what a fun ride. And then after you get every once in a while you'll get called back like to be the ring announcer for the first women's battle royal at WrestleMania and what was it like for you coming back it, do, how much do you miss it I, I know the schedule is it's tough I said it before but I know that's how schedule can wear on anyone but what was that like and how much do you miss it oh I mean I absolutely miss it uh, there's never I don't think there's I don't think there's any, well I don't know I can't speak for anyone else I know that for me I definitely miss the energy I miss watching like I was watching the best athletes in the world in the front of the front row. So I had the best seat in the house, watching all of this amazing athleticism in front of me, and then the energy of the fans. Like, I miss that energy of the fans. I miss all the people that I worked with. That's why it's so great to come there every now and then and do something for them. I love that. I love that I get to do these interviews because now, one by one, I'm getting to talk with my coworkers and get to know them in ways that I didn't even know them before, even working with them for so many years. So it's created a special bond and a deeper bond. When I see them after I've done Chasing Glory, we have a special hug now that we give each other because we shared so much in the interview. So that's been incredible. And it's just, this for me, this is a family forever. Um, and I feel like because I'm still tied to Chasing Glory, because they still invite me back every now and then, I don't feel like I necessarily have ever left. I've just taken a different role. Well, hopefully we'll get to see you singing the national anthem at Evolution, WWE's first pay-per-view, or be there, at least be there for the events. And I'll say this too, because you're a WWE alum, you probably have some good access to get guests on the show. Not too much you have to do to try to get anybody on your show. <laughs> well, it, it, and this is a big thing for WWE that I want to thank them, that they're allowing me to interview their current roster. Um, because they don't, you know, it, it doesn't, not everybody is getting this. And so I'm very um, honored, very privileged, and very, just grateful, very grateful that I'm getting this opportunity. And I know that they know that I'm trying to do these really amazing in-depth stories on their superstars, to it, it, which makes them more real, and I feel like it makes them more relatable, and therefore the person wants to cheer for them even more. And, um, and again, not exploiting them. So it's been a complete win-win situation. And that's the best way to do it. And it's very something, very interesting. I always love watching on WWE Network when they show the families of the superstars. They do a segment where the superstar goes back home and they talk with mom and dad. And it's just so cool. Things like that are really human interest, really cool things and all. All right, let's wrap this up, Lillian. So, Lillian, I'll, I'll get some short answers on this. Why only one L in Lillian? In the middle. Because it's Spanish. Yeah, because it's Spanish. If you write the name with two L's, it's pronounced like a Y. Thank you for the education on that, because I'm sure yeah. you've seen it spelled with two L's in the middle so many times. I know, because that's the way it's written here in the, in the States, but in Spain, um, any Spanish culture, you will only see it with one L, because otherwise it'd be Le Yen. And I'm not Le Yen. 
<laughs> oh man, that's great. All right, and University of South Carolina, you graduated. What was your degree in? Media arts, which I'm so grateful for. I learned how to. I my my degree was in producing and directing, and like producing and directing films. But I learned photography. I learned how to edit. So all those things now. It's a crazy how it's been so helpful in being executive producer of my podcast because I know how to edit. I know how to produce. I know how to like. It, it's just these things that I go, wow, college really did help me. Is Lillian Garcia a fan of Fozzie? I love Fozzie. I even got up and sang with Fozzie. Yes, there you go. You sang like so. I'm going to ask you that. I was going to see that because you didn't get to sing with Lita, but you did get to sing with Fozzie. What was that like? <laughs> oh, it was awesome. Jericho was incredible. We had so much fun. Got up there and sang something, and then we had so much fun, we sang something else together. He's just incredible. Yeah, he is very. Him and Mick Foley are so multi talented. It's crazy. Oh. Uh, all right, so we're wrapping this up. Lillian Garcia, nice enough to take time. We've got this big WWE pay-per-view evolution. First, all women's pay-per-view for WWE. That's coming up. And we'll, we'll close on these two notes. The first one is, why do you think this is happening now, Lillian? There have been many great talents in the women's ranks in WWE. But why do you think... This is all evolving, the revolution, and it's all happening now. Well, I think with anything, it's, it's, a, it's a matter of time before something gets noticed. Because I think it's got, it was screaming. I think the fans definitely made it happen. It started with the whole uh, give divas a chance uh, hashtag that trended. I think it was for three days straight. Uh, that started the ball rolling. I think that the, the talent has been incredible, but I feel like the talent's always been there. It's just that the opportunity is there, right? Once the, once the women started getting the opportunity to have longer matches, to start main eventing, all of that, they started proving it wasn't handed to them. Because when you saw the match, or you saw the Elimination Chamber match, when you saw the ladder match, you go, wow, that was so good. The Royal Rumble, like all of these were so I am so happy that this is happening for them because I will never forget there were a numerous amount of pay-per-views where I was the only female that was coming out there. So it would be myself, and then every single match had a male, and not, not even one manager out there was female. I was the only female representing in the entire show. So to go from that to an all-women's pay-per-view, I couldn't be more proud. This is, It's time for it, but I think the world has just been moving that way, not just wrestling. You see what's happened with the Me Too movement. You see what's happening. Like Women are starting to get recognized because after a while, you can't hold things down, and that's what's happening here. But I love that the men are embracing it. That I appreciate because this isn't about men bashing at all. This is just about celebrating the women and the, what the work of the women have done. But I love it. Like even Seth Rollins said, I'm surprised it even took this long. And that's beautiful that a male is saying that and embracing that. Well, another thing's beautiful, and here's how we're going to wrap this up, is, and you tell me if this is right, uh, through your friend Molly Holly, that you were able to reconnect with God. Yeah. And I, here's my question. And if it's not, that's okay, too. I mean, either way. But is there some representation in the title of Chase and Glory, biblically speaking? That's not what I intended at all. But I also think that I God is, is really big for me. And, you know, I grew up being Catholic, and I grew up believing and all. But then there were some years that I just... It just wasn't part of my life. You know, people start going to church or something, or uh, just whoever was around me wasn't going to church or something, so I started stop going to church. And then I'll never forget, like I was going to counseling, trying to figure life out, and Molly reminded me in the locker room, she goes, you know, counseling's great and all, but don't forget, you do have God to lean on. And I looked at her like, whoa, I totally forgot. And so I started leaning on God again. And as soon as I started leaning on God, he, I could hear him going, well, there you are. I've been waiting for you. <laughs> you know, because that's the thing about God. God, Jesus, all of that won't impose himself.
she was she gave me the the um, just the awareness again. And but I do notice though the chase for glory that some people do go for the glory, right? And then they feel like certain things are going to make them happy, and they think like they're going to get their glory if they only get this, and then they get it, and then they're so unhappy. And Sting is a perfect example of that. When he came on my show and he talked about that, he said, I was at the pinnacle of my career. I had money. I had all of this stuff. But yeah, I was all so depressed. And I was so low. And then I found God. And he goes, and that has been the most fulfilling thing for me. So I don't know if that's the path for, any, for everybody. I have never imposed my belief of anything on anyone. 